What makes a cruise ship tick? It depends on who you ask. I think it's the food that makes a cruise ship tick for me. <laughs> Being in the middle of the ocean and riding on a flow rider. All the different things you can do and all the fun activities. The excursion's big time. I mean, that's what makes me tick. And if I tick, <laughs> I can make other people tick. The shows and the performances and the entertainment. It's definitely the crew. Us working together for the common denominator, and that is to make the guests happy. Cruising is the fastest growing segment of the travel industry, with more than 12 million passengers each year. And for good reason. There's something on cruise ships to satisfy everyone, from extreme activities to relaxing entertainment, and a growing roster of destinations and excursions to please any passenger. But have you ever thought about the effort it takes, and from how many people, to keep this ship ticking around the clock? From bow to stern and port to starboard, a cruise ship is a delicate balance of engineering and entertainment, of pleasure and perfection. And this dedicated team of professionals works as one to make your next cruise unforgettable. ships are a constantly revolving door. As soon as one ship full of passengers disembarks, it's time to load up again and head out. And with just a few hours for this turnover, crews have to work at a frenzied pace. Every inch of this 1,100-foot nautical resort must be spotless. Thousands of staterooms must be cleaned. Cooks rush to prepare lunch for boarding guests and thousands of pieces of luggage are unloaded. Making room for new passengers, more bags, and bigger appetites. With 1,500 crew servicing some 4,500 passengers, for every three passengers, there's a person on staff, most of whom you never see. And every job is essential. Before the ship even leaves port, the first line of duty begins with Sunil. As an inventory manager, I'm responsible for all the inventory which takes place on the hotel site, which involves food and beverage, stewarding supplies, and other hotel supplies. With hundreds of pallets of food and beverages to load, there's a lot of work to be done, and only eight hours to do it. We start at 8.30, the loading process. Our main priority during the loading day is to take everything on the ship before our departure. And usually our departure is at 5 o'clock, but we don't ever try to go until 5. We always try to make it happen at least 2 to 3 hours in advance. Sunil's grocery list is similar to most families, except for the quantities. 50 to 60 trailers are unloaded, and more than 400 pallets of food and beverages. There's a lot of work to be done so the ship can return to the open seas with a full load of paying passengers. We check every pallet, what is coming on board. After we are satisfied with it, then it comes to the secondary stage. And from here, my team move it into various storage locations. Even with 11 refrigerated storage rooms and two dry ones, space on board is limited. And every square inch and ounce counts. It's really challenging to maintain all the 4,000 items in stock with minimum shortages. There's room for error, but uh, our uh, goal is to achieve 99.9% .9 accuracy. Sunil's experience is crucial. Having too much on hand is wasteful, but having too little can be disastrous. It's very, very important that accuracy really matters. The success for the whole ship depends upon how accurately we order the stock and it reflects all over the ship. A seven-day cruise has to smoothly tick like clockwork 24 hours a day. So Sunil and his team must anticipate the needs of all 4,500 guests and must be prepared to serve them at 10 different restaurants, endless buffets, and an ice cream parlor. Beef we use around 30,000 pounds. All of the assorted meats, we use 25,000 pounds. 
25,000 pounds of poultry products, about 30,000 dozens of fresh eggs. On deck, passengers begin exploring their new home away from home. And these two chose to tie the knot before the ship departs. Our couple today, Chad and Cassie, married on embarkation day. The wedding happens before the ship takes off. That way they can use the whole cruise as their reception. I now pronounce you husband and wife. And Chad, you may kiss your bride. For Chad and Cassie, the decision to get married on board was both romantic and sensible. We thought that the uh, honeymoon mixed with the wedding would be a real affordable and awesome way to go. And neither one of us had ever been on a cruise before, so we thought it would be a great experience. The <laughs> wedding was really good. It was really good, and everybody helped me out with my dress. It beat our expectations all the way. It did. Yeah. It was a very nice experience. Below deck, Sunil's team still has a lot of work left to do. 10,000 pieces of luggage must be loaded and delivered to the right rooms. We have two luggage loading points on the ship. One is on the aft of the ship, another one is in the forward of the ship. And both we use this kind of conveyor. The housekeeping staff, they sort the luggage and it goes to each guest stateroom. Hello, sir, welcome aboard. Oh. Hey, this is of luggage for you. At five o'clock, it's bon voyage. And as the sun sets over Miami, the fully stocked ship sets sail on your seven-day Caribbean adventure.